Across this great nation, there is a culture of people who carry on a heritage. They have an intangible quality that can't be described, but it comes from deep within their hearts. They share an appreciation for the greatest things that come from Mother Earth. They watch over, understand, and care for the vast wilds of this great country. Fishing, hunting, and trapping are the foundations that Canada was built on. For over two centuries, we have taken to the woods and water to pursue wild game. Today, it's about conservation, preservation, and wildlife management. Whether you are a man or woman, fish or hunt, you should support sound wildlife management and proudly say, I am an angler and hunter. The Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters proudly presents Angler and Hunter Television. Look, Mikey, they're coming. <laughs> <laughs> I think I see one. Oh, it smokes. Falling all around us. Oh my God, here they come. So basically, we're going to run decoys. The wind's going to just carry them out in front of us. With jillions. Oh, look at them. A few years back, we featured an episode where we were hunting long-tailed ducks on Lake Ontario. Yeah! Yeah, we got three or four of that, too. And since that show aired, we've had countless inquiries wondering if these little ducks make good table fare. That's one gorgeous duck. Well, the short answer is yes, they do. And the long answer starts with breasting out a limit of long-tailed ducks. And then, once breasted, let them marinate overnight in some beef stock. Okay, so I've got the duck breasts. I marinated. I'm going to pull these out. After you take the duck breasts out of the marinade, pat them dry, and dice them up into stew-sized chunks. And then, simply fill a crock pot with potatoes, carrots, onions, peas. Dump in the peas and toss the duck breasts on top. Spread it around. Now you want it on top, because the final ingredient in an Irish stew is Irish beer. Cover that up there. So there, one can just covers it. You're gonna put the lid on that. Turn it to low and let her cook. Now, while we're letting this cook, let's go back and see how Brownie and I spent a day on the big lake hunting longtails that went into the stew. Lake Ontario is home to a massive winter population of longtail ducks, and it numbers in the hundreds of thousands. Notorious for diving into deep water to feed on mussels and crustaceans, these fast flyers also make for some great wing shooting. With Brownie well into his second year, and having gained plenty of hunting experience, I was confident that he'd perform in the frigid open waters of Lake Ontario. So we loaded up the Lund John boat and headed out to set up the decoys a couple hundred yards from shore. There's a single coming. Okay. So there's one thing, you know, on the east coast of Canada, and even on the west coast, the sea ducks are a real popular option. Now I've been out here in Lake Ontario and, and hunted these long tails, but um, since I did that the one time, I've never been able to, uh, holy, look at them out here. I've never really come back and just hunted them. I'm gonna try and get a limit of six and make an, an Irish stew. I've got a recipe for Irish stew with these birds that's supposed to be to die for. And uh, second, I'm only going to make really good shots that I know I can knock that bird down with. I'm not just going to, to you know, flock shoot or I'm going to pick one bird and uh, try and knock him down. Because when you're hunting open water, especially with a lab, you don't want him chasing a, um, a down bird or an injured bird. I just want him to go out and get it and come back. But uh, the good thing about these long tails is I've been out here fishing 
is they'll do drive-bys. They'll come right by you um, where you wish you had a shotgun in your hand sometimes when you were fishing. So we're just going to sit tight. I'm going to actually drift down. There's a point here. You'll see we're in some rollers here. Um, I want to maybe drift down to that point. Looks like there's a bit of a windbreak. It's not too bad. These are just rollers coming in off of Lake Ontario. So we're going to sit tight, Brownie, and watch, okay? This portion of Angler and Hunter Television brought to you by Yamaha ATVs. Getting out onto the Great Lakes to hunt sea ducks does have its challenges. And the biggest one is, of course, wind. Wind's picking up, man. You definitely want to avoid gusty days with erratic white caps and breaking waves. And in fact, ideal conditions are calm water with a slight chop or big slow rolling swells. Either of these conditions will let you anchor in position and allow the birds to see your decoy spread. Dead bird, Brownie, fetch him up. Fetch him, go. Dead bird, see him, Brownie? Way back. Fetch him up. Had a boy. Fetch him up. This was Brownie's first time hunting from a boat. Good boy. So he was a little reluctant to take the plunge. But <laughs> once up. he realized all he had to do was jump in. Good boy. He was powering through the waves to grab those long tails as if he'd done it a thousand times before. Man, they fly fast. And they're further out than you think. Like. Man, he probably swam 60 yards to get that bird. Good boy! Come on! Come on! Right here. Come on! Good boy! Good boy! Sit! Good boy! Good boy! Keeping things simple is the key when hunting sea ducks. A small spread of decoys to draw them in, comfortable position to shoot from. So uh, most of the times, like if you're hunting with decoys, birds will actually land in them. But what I found here is the decoys are almost a distraction for the birds and they come in and they'll do a little light up where they kind of slow down. That's when you want to shoot at them. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, oh, all hens. Now the one thing about long tails that I've learned is uh, they're, they're such a small bird, they fly really fast. Uh, I'm not, I'm gonna guess like 50 miles an hour. So to pass shoot them, it's tempting because some of them are in range, but the lead you gotta put on them and the chance of knocking them down isn't great. And with just a small spread, a lot of times they will do a big turn and come back. And they don't always light up like, like a mallard or a puddle duck does, but they will sort of break their, their flight and, and pause, and that's when you can crack them. But again, you got you want to use premium ammo out here. Um, like this stuff, I'm, I'm shooting for a bird that small, you would think you may maybe use a number six shot, but um, I would shoot a two or a four, and I'm shooting fours, um, but three inches. You want a lot of hitting power out there, so. Use a three inch shell, make sure it's fast, you know, 14 or 1500 feet per second. And uh, like this browning extra distance just works awesome. When I get a shot at one. <laughs> hey Brownie, sit. Now, bobbing in these waves made it a challenge to spot the ducks in the distance. Here's two, here's two. But when I did spot them, they were on top of the decoys in a matter of seconds. You ready? Here we go. This one's gonna come right in. Dead bird. Fetch him up, Brownie. Fetch him up. Called that, eh? That's the way that you want them to come in. Good boy. Good boy. Come on. Come on. That's the way it's supposed to work. Nice one. Double or triple tail. Might be a triple. Here. Come over here. Your ladder's here. It's right here. He'll figure it out. That's what you do. Good boy. Hey. Huge rafts of birds can be seen for miles. 
lifting and flying from feeding areas. Smaller groups would come into the bay to rest, and these are the birds that will usually come into the decoys. They like the decoys. Good boy, Brownie. Back. Way back. Go on, good boy. You're almost there. It's a long retrieve. Nice. Good boy. Bring her in. Come on. Look how far out that dog is. That's awesome. Come on, buddy. Over here. Right here. That's it. Good boy. Nicely done. Hey. Good boy. <laughs> hey, good fetch. You're going to get a treat for that. That's more like it. Ah, look at you already know what you're getting. Huh? He gets venison. Spoiled. All right. A couple more and we're going to go home and make stew. This portion of Angler and Hunter Television brought to you by Min Kota and Humminbird. Oh yeah, here we go. How did I not kill that bird? Getting a bead on these fast flyers is a real challenge, and pass shooting them is the ultimate test. That I was failing miserably at. I suck. No, I didn't get him, Brownie. <laughs> I missed. And Brownie repeatedly let me know. <laughs> I'm not the world's greatest water fowler, okay? He's mad. Okay, watch these ones, maybe. Come on, come on, turn. Oh, you see that, Brownie? <laughs> you get a lot of that. Those birds, they'll fly over and just check the decoys but not come in the cool thing about shooting in open water like this especially having an auto loader is if you miss on a shot you, you can see the spray in the water where your pellets hit and adjust your shot for the next one so a lot of times i'll actually shoot my bird hit my bird on the second shot because the first shot i'll see my spray low or behind it or in front of it but you do got to put a big lead on them here that's for sure out in the open like this, there's nothing to to relate to, so depth-wise, it's hard to judge the distance. But watching your spray in the water, it helps a lot with uh, adjusting your shot. Tell you what, it ain't easy looking through binoculars when you're on the water, but it sure helps spotting birds. You got, it, it almost a must. When you spot a big raft or a group flying. Otherwise, here we go. Sit, sit, sit. Come on, turn, turn, turn. He looks just like a pheasant. Oh, he's going back into shore. Looks like there's about 200 out there, though. I find what they do is they go out into deep water. There's two behind me. They go out into deep water, and then they come back into these shallow points. In and out, in and out. You gotta be careful when you're out here. I mean, it's above zero, five or six degrees today, but the wind dislodges a bunch of ice from the shore and there's icebergs floating around out here. Uh, they're not big enough to really wreck your boat, but if you hit that with your motor, you wreck your prop. So go slow, take your time. Don't be in a hurry out in these conditions. doesn't work. The best strategy for long tails, come on, is to wait and see if they actually decoy. He's coming. Sit, Brownie. And then when they flare or drop their landing gear, it's time to hit them. Okay, here we go. Good boy. Good boy. Fetch a bird. Nice work. Bring him here.
good dog. <laughs> Over here. Brownie over here. Over here, bud. Ladder's over here. Good boy. Over here. Double tail. They're coming in now. Hen. The Hunting Edge is brought to you by Browning Ammunition. To get the edge over the ducks, I set up in a Lund 12-foot John boat, powered by a 9.9 .9 Merc 4-stroke. I used a pair of Burris Drop Tide 10x42 waterproof binoculars to spot incoming ducks. My trusty Browning A5 shotgun, loaded with Browning BXD 3-inch No. 4 steel shot, was dropping the birds in close so Brownie didn't have to make long retrieves. And finally, my Camilla's knife made breasting and preparing these birds a cinch. Come on, give me one more. It's pretty dark, pretty gloomy. Sun setting. I see lots of birds, but they're 10 miles out in the lake. I guess it's one of those things. They don't, uh, they don't roost up in groups near shore, maybe. But I had a fun day. Knocked a few birds down. Brownie got to go swimming. Did you like that, buddy? It's crazy, eh, out here? Bobbing around in the waves. But uh, you know what? I'm one bird short of a limit, but that's not the end of the world because I'm not feeding a big group of people. And what I'm going to do with these birds, I'm going to fillet the breasts out and put them into an Irish stew. So everybody's going to get uh, a little bit of meat in their stew. And that's what it's all about. You know, you come out in the cold weather and late in the season like this and uh, get some birds to make a hearty meal, basically is what I'm doing. And if one happens to fly by and I get lucky and fill my limit, great. If not, perfect. No, oh, hen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dead bird, Brownie, go get him. Dead bird. Dead bird in the water. Mark him. Good boy. Keep going back. Yep, keep going. Good boy. Go back. Fetch her up. Good boy. Come on. Come on. Good boy. Come on. Right here. Get on your ladder. Get on the ladder. That a boy. Get on there. Get on your ladder. Oh, you did it. Come on in, buddy. <laughs> Well, there's our our bird, huh? Now we can go home. What do you think? Skies are gray, it's getting dark. Good boy. Hey, look at that. That's a hen. Beauty. See, these are small ducks, but uh, a lot of feathers and not much meat. So I'm gonna breast these out and make an Irish stew and uh, it's gonna be a great hearty fall meal. Hey buddy, you did good, come here. Look at this. Hey, you did good. Yeah, but you know, I'm not far offshore, but I'm in a small boat and uh, doesn't take much. Get out here and have some fun. String of decoys and shoot long tails. You want some Irish stew? Huh? Maybe I'll give you some. Let's go in. So finally, back to the question. Do long tails make good table fare? Smells fantastic. On a cold winter day. Oh my God, the meat just falls apart. Mm. Incredible. You know? If you're having a party, maybe a weekend get together, or if you're uh, just staying in on a cold wintry weekend, mm. that's spectacular. Wow, that's a delicacy you certainly can't get in a restaurant. Closed captioning of Angler and Hunter Television is brought to you in part by Ontario Out of Doors Magazine. Angler and Hunter Television has been brought to you by Canadian Tire, 
Mercury Marine, and Lund Boats. Yamaha ATVs. Browning Ammunition. Browning Firearms. Suffolk Fishing Line. Rapala. Camillus Knives and Cuda Tools. Excalibur Crossbows. And Yukon Gear. For more information on the products used in this episode of Angler and Hunter Television, visit AHTV.com. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Remember, conserve and protect our great outdoors.